Florida has a rich folklore full of ghost stories, pirate treasure, cover-ups, and cryptids. We've got a few that have become pretty well known, you know, the Swamp Ape down south, the ghosts of the Biltmore Hotel in Miami, Walt Disney's body and cryogenic storage under the Magic Kingdom, but one strange legend that nobody really talks about anymore is that of Florida's lost swamp volcano. Like most of these stories, there's a lot of contradicting information and conflicting accounts, but generally it goes something along these lines. There was once a time, not too long ago, that a mysterious pillar of smoke billowed out endlessly from the Wakisa Swamp, near the state capital of Tallahassee. You could have climbed up to the dome of the Capitol building and seen it coming out of the dense jungle dozens of miles away. It came from south-southeast from the city, near the mouths of the St. Marks and Wakula rivers. The local Native Americans used the column as a navigational aid for centuries, and Spanish conquistador Hernando de Soto is also said to have sighted the smoke when he first explored the area. At night, you could see a faint glow lighting up the smoke from beneath. Nobody seemed to agree as to whether it was a column of mist or a pillar of smoke, and the residents had a variety of explanations for the phenomenon. The more religious folks talked about it being created by the devil to lure victims into the dangerous swamp. Others thought it was the smoke from a bonfire in a secret camp. Sometimes it was a camp of runaway slaves, other times it was pirates or bootleggers, and during the Civil War it was said to be Confederate deserters. Some thought it was the mist coming up off a hot spring, but most commonly it was said to be the product of an undiscovered volcano just waiting to go off. The Wakula Volcano saw its peak of popularity between the end of the Civil War and the turn of the century. It was said that every newspaper man that came into town wrote a piece about the strange pillar of smoke, and people from New Orleans to New York were reading articles about the volcano. Expeditions were sent into the jungle to search for the thing, but no one was ever able to definitively locate it. Although quite a few explorers claimed to have found the mouth of the volcano, none were able to confirm their discoveries. There was even one death of a New York reporter from something called Swamp Fever. Then in 1886, a massive earthquake hit Charleston, South Carolina. 60 people died as a direct result. The shock wave was felt across the region and beyond. Tremors were reported as far as Chicago and Cuba, and it was even feared that Florida, as in the entire state, of Florida had literally broken off from the rest of the country. When everything settled down again, the residents of Tallahassee noticed that their pillar of smoke, that constant column on the horizon, was gone. Gone with the wind. Never to be seen again. That's how the story goes, anyways. A lot of what we know about the so-called volcano can actually be confirmed by contemporary accounts from the time. It wasn't just a story created by locals to entertain visitors, but that doesn't mean that the truth wasn't embellished at all. So let's see if we can separate fact from fiction in this case, and determine what people had seen coming out of the Wakisa Swamp back then, and for exactly how long. This region of Florida has been inhabited for literally thousands of years before the Spanish showed up in the 16th century. It was the Timucuan people who gave Wakula its name, which means either spring of water or mysterious water, likely a reference to the Wakula Springs. European control of the region shifted hands many times throughout the years. It started out as a Spanish outpost, with a fort being built in the late 1600s, and the first settlers brought in around 1730. Then in 1763, Britain took ownership of Florida following the French and Indian War, and divided it into two colonies. East and West Florida. Twenty years later, in 1780, the Spanish were back after regaining Florida in the Treaty of Paris. And then after decades of political tension and military escalation with the Americans, control of Florida was handed over to the United States in 1821. Most sources commented on a long tradition of native legends about the smoke and how it might have even been spotted by conquistador Hernando de Soto, 
But strangely enough, it's only around the 1820s, 1830s that the smoke is first recorded, and those stories of sightings from the 20s and 30s were only written about decades later. If the pillar had been present there during the previous English and Spanish periods, they did not find it interesting enough to document. I was unable to find anything about the smoke or a volcano from native sources either, and the sources referencing native legends never quote them directly. It seems most likely that the smoke was a phenomenon exclusive to the 19th century, although the dates here are very fuzzy. We will see that this is also the conclusion that state librarian W.T. Cash later proposed in the 1930s. The volcano saw its peak of popularity in the late 1800s. The earliest surviving account of the smoke pillar is from 1875, and was originally published in the Semi-Tropical Monthly. It describes an alleged expedition that went in search of the volcano and claimed to have discovered a hundred-foot-tall mass of rocks surrounded by pumice and ash. This was never definitively confirmed, but there are some later accounts of similar formations. People were searching for, and expecting to find, a traditional-looking volcano hidden in the swamps. Five years later, the Weekly Floridian published a story about a local man named James McDougall who had spotted the smoke while marooning down the Gulf Coast. The article mentions that the smoke had been seen for years beforehand. That year alone, the Weekly Floridian published five articles on the smoke. Another article was published in the New York Times around the same time, and this one describes the smoke as illuminated from below by a light brighter than the moon. Many later and modern sources reference the 1886 Charleston earthquake as being the point where the smoke disappeared. So you might expect that one of the local newspapers would have written about how the smoke had vanished. But there's nothing. It was seen on and off, so they might not have thought much of it going out. But there is an entry from 1892, uh, from a book called Handbook to Florida, on the volcano that has a footnote where the author claims to have been shown the smoke on several successive days. Then there's at least three articles written in the 20th century that say the smoke was last seen during World War I, but I couldn't find anything from those years exactly that referenced the volcano. There are also no photographs of the smoke either. The closest we get are a couple of illustrations like this one. The 20th century saw renewed interest in the old legend, as the land was further developed. A few expeditions were even organized to search for the source of the missing pillar of smoke. William T. Cash, Florida's first state librarian, was asked about the stories by state geologist Herman Gunter in 1934. Cash replied in a letter where he cleared up a few things. First, he claims to have heard of no accounts of the smoke prior to the Civil War, and writes that it probably existed for a period of 15 years from 1867 to 1883. Cash didn't buy the idea that the smoke disappeared with the Charleston earthquake either. He was pretty sure that it was no longer seen by 1884, two years before the quake. And he proposed the idea that the source of the column was actually burning peat that had somehow been ignited. Simply, peat is partially decomposed plant matter that builds up over time under certain conditions. It's usually thick, spongy, and basically non-flammable because it forms in oxygen-deprived, waterlogged environments. However, when it becomes to dry out, it becomes a real fire hazard. Historically, peat has been mined as a fuel source. A couple of years prior to that letter, a local man by the name of William Wyatt had embarked on his own little expedition into the Wakisa Swamp during the dry season between 1932 and 33. In an address he gave, Wyatt described hiring a guide and marching deep into the swamp, where the two of them discovered piles of rocks 15 feet high next to a number of sinkholes. He said that they looked like they had been blown out of the earth by some gigantic hand and that the edges of the rocks looked melted. And even though Wyatt claimed to have found this strange geological anomaly, which lines up pretty close to expectations, he still argued that the so-called volcano was probably a long-running peat fire. Others ventured into the marsh, and most returned empty-handed. However, Wakula County Judge A.L. Porter claimed that he had found the quote-unquote crater of the volcano while deer hunting with a friend. 
This was the focus of an article written by the Tallahassee Democrat in 1956. Porter wrote that they had stumbled upon a rocky knoll deep in the swamp that at its crest had a burnt crater the size of a small dishpan. The pit extended downwards as far as he could see, and the men both agreed then and there that they had discovered the mysterious swamp volcano. The author of this article also speculates that this knoll could be the 15-foot-tall pile of rocks that Wyatt had found earlier. Yet despite his discovery, Porter, much like Wyatt, concluded that the phenomenon was not the product of volcanic activity. However, he didn't agree with the peat theory, and thought that the smoke was rather natural gas that had snaked its way up to the surface and been ignited by lightning or a forest fire. So what was behind all this? The smoke or vapor or mist or gas was never seen again. Whether it disappeared in 1884 or 1886 after the Charleston earthquake or in the 1890s or during World War I is something that'll likely never be known for sure. We can be pretty certain that it didn't exist before the 1820s. What we also know is that for all intents and purposes, this was a real natural phenomenon. Both locals and visitors wrote about seeing the smoke themselves, and it seems like a rather boring thing to make up as folklore. It's definitely no Jersey Devil or Mothman. So realistically, what could it have been? There's no way it was an actual volcano, right? As you might have figured, the answer is a very definitive no. The geology of Florida cannot produce a volcano especially not the Big Bend region of the state. Volcanoes usually form along tectonic plate boundaries, and Wakula is far from any. In March of 1882, the unnamed author of this piece from On the Gulf Coast proposed a theory independent of any volcanism. He claimed to have also gone out in search of the smoke's origin and come to the conclusion that it was simply all the mist and fog gathering together above the center of the swamp and rising away together in a column. This is an interesting idea, but it's not supported by the rest of the evidence, and the pillar eventually disappeared at some point, so if this was something that naturally happened in the swamp, you would imagine that it would still be there. Okay, so what about A.L. Porter's theory that it could have been burning natural gas leaking up from somewhere deep in the rock? Well, the problem with that idea is that Florida has no natural gas, except that the far end of the state near the border with Alabama. And it's not like the oil companies didn't survey the land in Wakula, they did back in the 40s. Others suggested that it could be mist coming up off a hot spring, but Florida springs are notoriously only warm, as the state can't really produce anything spicier. The only hot spring in Florida is located in Sarasota County and is only around 85 degrees. So if it wasn't any of those things, then we end up with the burning peat theory that William Wyatt and W.T. Cash proposed. Florida is covered in peat. It can be found basically in any part of the state. Once ignited, peat can burn for weeks, months, and yes, even years, and it smolders. Peat fires are the most common type worldwide and are notoriously difficult to extinguish. Once fire gets into underground peat, it's protected from winds and rain. On rare occasions, even a hurricane isn't enough to put out a peat fire. The 2011 Great Dismal Swamp Fire survived Hurricane Irene and lasted four months. However, with any fire, enough water will put it out. And the late 1880s, the time that most people claimed the smoke disappeared, saw a lot of storms hit the area. Two Category 2 hurricanes hit St. Mark's in June of 1886, just weeks before the Charleston earthquake in August. Another two hit the next year in July and October, and that brought lots of rain with them. A tropical storm in 1889 that hit Pensacola, and at least eight documented storms hit the Panhandle through the 1890s. This isn't a huge point. Anyways, the fire could have extinguished itself on its own like many peat fires do, the very nature of these fires causes them to form empty pits that eventually get flooded and create lakes. So after all this, what do we have? 
we can conclude fairly confidently that what's come to be known as the Wakula Volcano as a phenomenon did not exist before the 19th century. The earliest confirmed sightings of the smoke only go back as far as the 1860s, and state librarian W.T. Cash believed that it only existed for about 15 years between 1867 and 1883. Many expeditions were organized to try to discover the source of the smoke throughout the years, and while many came back with stories of massive rock piles and bottomless craters, none were able to confirm their findings. All sorts of theories were concocted to try to explain the column, from it being the smoke from a camp of bootleggers or deserters, to the steam coming from a hot spring, to the work of the Dark Lord himself trying to lure the curious to their deaths. The most consistent with the geology and environment of the region is that the so-called volcano was simply a long-lasting underground peat fire. And I guess that is a very human thing to do, right? People didn't have an easy answer to something rather inconsequential, and they came up with any and all possible stories to explain it away. I also think that it's kind of neat to know that since the Wakula volcano was probably a peat fire, then that means that it could re-emerge at any moment. And I wonder what kind of stories I'll come up with when that happens. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay mysterious.